why I kind of ran close to my 15 minute budget on the last video. I didn't quite get to finish this. So let me, um, we're down here to question number six. And again, particle motion, very, particle motion describing how objects move is a, a great application of calculus, uh, an application in which the, um, the derivative was invented to describe, to be able to describe instantaneous velocity, instantaneous um, acceleration. Remember your speedometer on your car is going to measure, is going to measure instantaneous speed, instantaneous speed. So this right here, which is going to be the absolute value of the derivative of position, uh, that's what it's going to measure. And I drew in, in red here, notice the difference between ooh, the function, the green function down here, the green function is velocity. You know, it goes, it, it starts off at 10, it goes through 0, I turn around, it goes negative. So it tells me I'm moving in the negative direction. Um, then it hits point D. I'm on the right window. Remember, I'm modeling my motion. And it goes positive, whereas speed is always positive. It's just the absolute value. So we we found out where does our um, where does the particle speeding up? Well, it's it's speeding up from B to C, and I'll do it down here because I'm going to answer that from B to C. It's speeding up, right? This is B, and then what? Here's D on the timeline, right? This is time. So from B to C, it's speeding up. It's also speeding up from D to E. I say, what do you notice about acceleration in these intervals? Well, this is a little, that's kind of a difficult question. Let me show you this, though. Notice right here, I'm talking about this problem. The velocity is negative, right? And the acceleration is negative. Okay. Notice here, in this case, the velocity is positive. And here, the acceleration is negative. Okay, from C to D, the velocity is negative. Acceleration is positive. But from D to E, the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive. So remember, um, maybe you haven't done this in physics, uh, or maybe you have, but the force is equal to mass the mass of the object, I guess that would be the mass of me, times acceleration. So, you know, a force, you can figure that's going to push something in that direction. So if the acceleration is positive, that means if the acceleration is positive and you're moving in the positive direction, well, you're going to speed up, okay? Speed up right here. If your, acceler if your velocity is negative, meaning you're moving to the left, and your force or your acceleration is negative, so the force must be pushing you in the negative direction. You got to be speeding up here too. Okay, so basically, if the acceleration and the velocity have the same sign, the particle must be speeding up. That's one way to look at it, or you could look at the function itself to understand that question. Okay, now we got a little summary. Some of what we've learned, again, very important application. Um, need a pen here. Yeah, blue's good. Summary, particle changes direction when the velocity equals zero and, and the velocity changes sign. Here's an example here of, um, look at the velocity here. It goes positive. It goes down and it touches zero, and then it goes back positive. Did the particle change direction? I mean, this is right here, v of, let's say that's 2, v of 2 is equal to 0. But notice the velocity didn't, didn't change. What's going on here? Well, the particle is slowing down, it's stopping, and then it's continuing in the same direction. So there was no, no direction change here. This is going to come up a lot. You set a derivative equal to zero, but it has to change signs in order for you to get a, 
a max or a min, but in this case, it has to change sign. Okay. Uh, speed. Well, speed, which is the absolute value of velocity, speedometer doesn't go negative, remember, uh, increases when the velocity times the acceleration is greater than zero. Or I might say, maybe, or you could just look at the curve and say, is increasing. Okay, what's distance? How do you calculate distance? You're going to add up changes in displacement or position. Maybe position's a little bit of a wordy, more familiar to you. You add that up, and again, I guess we'll get back to this when we learn how to integrate. Okay. Now here I got just to work on this kind of puzzle. I kind of I like um, putting together little function models. Remember, uh, calculus is all about a function. Here I'm giving you I give you a graphical function. I'm giving you velocity in this case. So this is a homework problem. And we'll maybe I'll I'll work here. Um, at another time, but homework problem, I'm modeling car motion going west on Broad Street. Okay, so I pull out of St. Charles um, right here. This is St. Charles at time zero. At time zero, I'm at St. Charles, and you'll... Um, this is not displacement, though. This is velocity. So uh, what I do is, I, what I want you to do is, I want you to draw d of t, or I guess I used s of t, d of t to me. I want you to try to figure out what displacement is. Now again, this, remember, v of t is ds dt. This curve is giving me the slope of the tangent line of S. So here you got to figure out how to go backwards to S of T. Here, A of T is the, um, and I want you to draw the acceleration also. And then tell me a little bit of a story, what's going on at, at points in time, right? This is time. I don't know, I guess we could call this in seconds. Tell me a story of what's happening at A, B, C, and D. Okay, we'll uh, we'll discuss this in class. Um, see you soon.